The law of surrender, the law of acceptance, has been called the first law of spirit. Because, see, stress happens in our lives when the mind resists what is. Does that make sense? Things happen in life. Sometimes they're pleasant, sometimes less so. But when we resist what happens, when we resist reality, we stress out. No resistance, no stress. Have you ever seen that bumper sticker that says, if you don't like the way I drive, get off the sidewalk? <laughs> yeah. Well, some people, they're on the sidewalk, a car's coming at them, and they'll, you shouldn't be on the sidewalk, boom, they get hit. That's resistance. Somebody else sees the car coming, and the car zooms by. Later that day, they said, how was your day? Oh, same old, oh, yeah, I had a chance to test my reflexes today. You know? That's, that's, that's going with the flow. See, surrender is not capitulating to someone else's ego. Surrender is the most active, assertive, creative, intelligent response we can make to any moment. Because life is going to unfold the way it pleases. It's like the martial arts principle. When someone pushes you, you don't push back. If they push you, you pull. And if they pull you, you push. You go with the force, you make use of it. A couple of reminders. Sylvia Robinson said, sometimes holding on makes us strong, and sometimes letting go. Morihei Yashiba, the founder of Aikido, he referred to it as the art of peace. And he said, the art of peace is invincible because it contends with nothing. And as Byron Katie says, she really applies, her work applies a lot, this law of uh, surrender. She said, what happened to you should have happened because it did. And no wishing can make it any You're at a restaurant. You've been waiting. It's your favorite, favorite dessert there. You've been looking forward to it all week. And just before dessert served, you ask for it, and they go, oh, you know, we just ran out. We gave the last piece to that person sitting at that table next to you. You know, see them eating, enjoying it right there? Well, instead of, well, instead of going to the usual resistance, you know, like resisting reality, it's like, well, what? you're supposed to have it. It says it on the menu. You should have extra. That's not, that's not right. You put it on your menu. I want it right now. Go get it. Whatever, you know? Or you can go, oh, well, you know what? Uh, this gives me a chance to try something new. It's just how we want to respond to life, the law of surrender. The best martial artists apply it, and we can also apply it in our own lives. See, I'll give you three guidelines for living wisely and well. If you're an athlete, if you're a business person, in relationships, three good guidelines. One is, accept your thoughts and feelings, whatever they are, positive or negative, as natural to you in that moment. You don't have to pretend to like them. Sometimes they're pleasant, sometimes they're not. See, emotions are the weather patterns of the body. Literally, they're the weather patterns of the body. Sometimes it's a storm, sometimes sunny sky, sometimes it's rain. But accept our emotions and our thoughts as natural to us in the moment. That's one. Two, know your purpose. What is your purpose? What is your aim? What is your goal? In that moment, I don't mean just your lifelong aim, but I mean if you're talking with somebody, what's your purpose in that conversation? Do you want to give information, get information, just achieve rapport? Whatever the purpose is. Find your purpose in that moment. And the third guideline is do what needs to be done in line with your purpose. It's very respectful of you, of the individual. It doesn't say in line with Dan Millman's philosophy or the Bible or anything else. It says do it in line with what your purpose is. It's a way to function well in life, despite emotions and thoughts that may be assailing us. This was devised by a man named Shoma Morita, a Japanese psychiatrist. He, uh, he once said, when running up a hill, it's okay to give up as many times as you want, as long as your feet keep moving. <laughs> I hope you'll remember that in those times you need it. He also said, when passing by a mirror, notice the frame. <laughs> so few of us do, you know? And what he's really saying, this isn't really about mirrors, is it? It's about, instead of the, all the self-reference, all the time, the self-obsession, preoccupation, is look out into the world. Notice what's going on around us. So it's a way to function practically in life.